A salesman claims that his copiers can make a batch of copies in less than 2.3 seconds. Assuming that you can collect the necessary data, set up an appropriate hypothesis test and procedure to test the claim at the 5% significance level. So first I'll set up um, the hypothesis testing procedure just in general and in parallel I'll do this specific for, for this scenario. So in general we have a null and an alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis denoted H sub 0. You're testing either the mean or the population proportion or a difference of means or a difference of proportions and so on for the parametric tests. That is, we've got some parameters here. By the way, the population proportion is pi in some of the books. I'll use p because other books use p for the population proportions and then p hat for the sample proportion. Okay, so we're testing that uh, one of those, just, just one of those, you're just going to do a test about one of those, is either equal to or uh, less than or equal to or greater than or equal to it's technically correct to just say equal to, uh, but I know that when you're building the hypotheses and you're writing these down, it's, it's nice to be able to put in one of these as well. But anyway, the, the similarity of all three of these is that they all have an equal sign attached, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and then just equals. But technically, it's, it's just equals is, is what the null hypothesis is. And um, you're setting this this mean, say, equal to some value. Now, the alternative hypothesis, H sub 1, that is testing that the mean, the population mean, or the population proportion, or difference of means, da 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 da, da well, that is either not equal to, or greater than, or less than. Notice the how these are matching up, just the opposites. And that same value goes in there. So these values are the same in the null and the alternative hypothesis. Always, always, always these values are the same. And uh, the symbols will contradict each other. So it's either equals to or not equals to, less than or equal to, or greater than. Um, now again, it's technically always equal in the, in the null hypothesis, but you can think of these other symbols as being in there as well. So I'll, I'll do that when we uh, do it specific for this scenario. So we've got H sub 0, the null hypothesis, is that the mean, we're testing a mean here, or assuming he's talking about the average time of his copiers, is something 2.3 seconds. We're always saying equals in the null hypothesis, so 2.3 seconds. And I'm going to go back and fill something in there in a second. But first I'm going to put in the alternative hypothesis. And sometimes I do the alternative first, actually, just to help me with, with building the null hypothesis. Um, he's talking about less than, less than, strictly less than. He's not saying less than or equal to, but strictly less than. And that strictly less than belongs in the alternative hypothesis. So we put it down less than 2.3 seconds the claim, the claim is not, is not always the alternative hypothesis, but in this case it is, because his claim is that the mean is less than 2.3 seconds. Now up here, I promised that I'd come back to this, so the opposite of less than is greater than or equal to. So, you know, to keep it straight in your head, that, that might be a helpful thing to do. And some books actually show it like that. Okay, now we've got the null and the alternative hypotheses. Now what we want to get is the p-value. The p-value, it's the probability value. It's the, the probability um, of getting some sample mean, in this case, we're talking about a sample mean, um, more extreme, at, at least what you got, or extreme, farther from the mean than you did. So, for example, if we get a... a, a sample mean of two seconds, then we're going to find some associated p-value. So that is some distance away from, uh, from, the, from the assumed mean of 2.3 or the null hypothesis mean. So a good way to understand that is with the magic of pictures, that is with the normal distribution. 
So I want to put the 2.3, that's our null hypothesis uh, time. The null hypothesis mean is 2.3 seconds. Now what if we get some value down here less than 2.3 seconds and let's say it's right here. I'll make that X bar, that's our sample mean, less than 2.3 seconds. Then this area is our p-value, this area to the left of our sample mean. So we've got the normal distribution, and we would have some uh, either the a sample standard deviation, and in that case we're using a t distribution, or if we have if we're given the population standard deviation, then we're going to use the a standardized normal distribution with a z-score, but in any event, we're finding this area to the left of, because our example is, is less than. So I'm going to put a little note there. This is when you are saying um, the mean is less than some value. Now, if you are talking about the mean greater than some value, and I'm not going to put 2.3 because we've got a more general example mean. If you're talking about the uh, some value, finding some value greater than the mean. So if this is when our alternative is mu is greater than some value, then you're looking for this area to the right. That makes sense. Okay. Now, what if, and that's our p-value then, is, is that area to the right. But what if we have the situation here, this not equals 2. So now we have the mean right in the middle, this null, the, the number that's in our null, and by the way, that's the same number that's in our alternative hypothesis, is right there. Now we're looking at two tails. So even if you get x bar here, we're looking at uh, the same distance from the mean to the left, and then it's the sum of these two areas that is the p-value. So this is when mu is not equal to, for the alternative hypothesis, when mu is not equal to some value, then the sum of these two values is the p-value. And by the way, this, this p is used, whether you're talking about the, the mean or the proportion or whatnot, so p-value is the sum, sum of those two tails, as it's called in statistics. Okay, now what to do once you find the p-value? Here's what you're going to do. If, if the p-value is less than or equal to your significance level, alpha. Let's stop right here and define significance level. That's kind of like saying, um, what, what chance are you okay with of making a mistake? So your 5% uh, significance level, that's, that's like saying that you, you're willing to take a 5% chance of, of making a mistake. So alpha, alpha is our significance level, is 0 0.05. So always, you'll see it sometimes just written as significance level. Sometimes the book will just say alpha. But, and if you don't see anything at all, just assume alpha to be 0 0.05. So if the p-value is less than or equal to uh, that, then we're saying, okay, this is the probability that, that we made an error, but, but we're okay with that small probability of making an error. So we are going to actually reject the null. If, if the p-value is less than alpha, is less than the significance level, then we reject the null. Reject the null hypothesis. If, on the other hand, the p-value is greater than alpha, greater than the significance level, we're saying, hey, that's, that's too big of a chance of making an error. We, we don't want to stray away from that safe null hypothesis if, uh, if we have a p-value of greater than uh, one of these areas is greater than um, 0 0.05 in, in this example, we will fail to reject the null. We're not going to accept anything. St statistics means never having to say you're certain. Haha, ha, that's a little joke, but we've got, we say we fail to reject the null because 
uh, we we don't accept stuff because we're not saying for sure. There's some some probability inherent in there, but we fail to reject the null. So you can kind of think of it as siding with the null. We just but we don't fully commit to it. We don't accept it. We just but we're not rejecting it. We're saying okay, we're not gonna we're not gonna go with the alternative, but uh, but we're we're not gonna reject the null. So we just we'll, we're siding with the null hypothesis. Okay, and then of course you could write the conclusion that goes along with that. If you reject the null, then you could say, hey, then this alternative looks pretty good. I'm, re I'm rejecting the null, so I'm, um, I'm saying that the mean is less than 2.3 seconds. And if I fail to reject the null, then I would say, I'm not going to reject this. So we, we don't have enough evidence to say that the mean is, uh, is less than 2.3. We don't have enough evidence to say that. Okay, so there's a little bit on the process for hypothesis testing.